Good morning. It's Monday. You're like, where has he been? He's been gone. He went to North Carolina. He went to Alabama. He went where it was warm for a week. And we're back today <clears throat> with a funeral. Is that a surprise? No. Not a surprise today that we're doing a funeral, but here we are. Um, yep. So, hope everyone had a good weekend. I thought we had a great day at church yesterday and had four first time visiting families. So, thankful for that. Just thankful for how God uh, continues to grow the church and um, exciting to see things that are going on so um because i do have the funeral and uh we already have a few people that are here uh this may be cut a little bit short today um but uh yeah it's a it is a good day so um so good morning everybody i i tell you i can't even i i read breitbart this morning and i can't remember a thing <laughs> that I read, uh, so must not be anything newsworthy, uh, same, same monkeys running the circus, so I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I didn't rem remember anything entertaining anyway, so nothing really to share on, uh, the news today, so we'll just, uh, let's just get into the scripture today, a couple things that I'll share and then uh, be done. Um, but I would ask that you pray for us today. Uh, this funeral will be at 1030 our time here. And, um, he was a good man and, uh, is in heaven today. And we're thankful for that. Um, not sure about all of his family. And so, uh, we're just, uh, well, we're just going to do our best to witness to those guys today. And, and uh, tell them what they're missing out on if they don't know Jesus. So, um, but yeah, uh, so first of all, I was reading in Leviticus and Joyce, I see you're on here. And so uh, you you understand where we've been reading through Leviticus together here. And uh, <laughs> um, a lot of things I don't know, don't understand. Uh, I should, I really should go through and uh read through all of the, the feast and, and all the sacrifices because every one of them uh, points us to Christ. And uh, it's amazing to think um, all the, the symbolism that is used there. But, um, but I was reading in Leviticus 21 and 22 today, and uh, he's talking about the priest. In verse 1 of 21, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priest, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, there shall none be defiled uh, for the dead among his people. And, and the the thing that, that was uh, ringing a bell in, in my own heart today is I, I went through and I highlighted just in these two chapters as he talks about the priest. And, and look, I know Old Testament priest isn't the same as the New Testament pastor, okay? And I understand church wasn't back in the Old Testament. I understand that. But... Um, just as he used the priest for uh, ministering to people, he, he uses a pastor today. And, and so there are some principles there that uh, I want I, I to take to heart. And in verse 4, this is what I did. I just I highlighted down through these two chapters. Um, uh, I'll read this. You tell me the theme. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall be holy under their God and not profane the name of their God. For he is holy unto his God. He shall be holy unto thee, for I, the Lord, will sanctify you and am holy. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the horse, she profaneth her father, she shall be burnt with fire. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. Neither shall he profane his seed among uh, his people, for I, the Lord, do sanctify him. 
that he profane not my sanctuary. Is that verse 2 of chapter, those were all verses in chapter 21, 22, and they, and, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me, I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep my ordinance, lest they bear sin for it, and die therefore, if they profane it, I the Lord do sanctify them. And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, which they offer unto the Lord. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them, I am the Lord. Neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord, which hallow you. Uh, and so uh, the, the thought through this is, you know, here, uh, you know, talking about profaning his name, profaning his uh, uh, sanctuary. And, and it just reminds me of, of how important it is for me. You know, here I am, my devotion, right? So I'm just sharing things that I get it get for me, and, and hopefully God can use that in your life too. But uh, how important it is to walk in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit of God, and uh, uh, allowing God to use me as a vessel that um, can minister to people, to share the Word of God, to uh, be honoring uh, to Him in, in all ways. And, and it just reminds me to keep my keep my walk pure and and holy in in the eyes of God and and look he's the one that sanctifies he's the one that makes holy he's the one that makes righteous okay and um and and so as I walk in the spirit of God then I will be righteous in my behavior and and so that's what I see here and and God wants us doesn't expect us to be perfect but he does expect us to keep a close account of sin, get rid of that out of our lives, and to um, you, you, uh, walk with God in a powerful way. And, and uh, so that was, the, that was the first thing. And then the second thing, wow, I, I was uh, spending time on th this devotion this morning instead of spending time on the message for the funeral, and I kind of had to hurry up on both. But um, I, I don't know how many times I have read Psalm 43, but um, several, and today it just really jumped out at me, and I uh, I hope that it can help a lot of you guys too, and those that watch this, but uh, Psalm 43, I'll just read through it first, okay, there's only five verses, so it's really short, but powerful, and, and so it tells us this, it says, judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, Unto God my exceeding joy, yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now, I, I, I've told you this many times, that one of the main reasons I, I love uh, David, and may, maybe it'd be like this with many of the other Old Testament uh, people, but nobody wrote as much as David did in the Old Testament. And so, because of all these Psalms. And, but I, I want to go through this and, and see how the battles that David has, and, and the battle that uh, here, I believe that, that David had a battle with uh, depression. I, I think that um, I, I think that he uh, battled with uh, fear. I, I think that um, he, he was um, in, in anxiousness here, uh, definitely a depression. I mean, look at this. So first of all, he says, judge me, O God. That, that word judge has the idea, Lord, I, I am asking you to vindicate me and, and, and prove to people that I am right in, in what I'm doing. And, and 
what, what he's doing, serving God, okay? That's the aspect here. And plead my cause against an ungodly nation. And that, that word plead has the idea to uh, uh, bring a case against the ungodly nation. So like a court of law, right? And uh, to strive and, and to contend with this ungodly nation and, and show them that, Lord, I'm just asking you to show them that I am right in, in what I'm doing and walking with you and following you and, and being honoring to you. You know, people people look at, at believers and think, man, how weird they are, you know, and uh, the things that they won't do and the things they don't say, the places they don't go, the the way that they act. I, I mean, they're they're just totally different than the rest of the world. And, and if they if they're walking in the spirit, they are. And so, uh, and they're, they're going to, uh, look at us weird. They're going to say crazy things. There, there are those that are definitely in this ungodly nation that hate Christianity. And so, uh, and, and so here David's crying out to, to God and saying, Lord, vindicate me and plead my cause. And, and then, oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. I, I, Lord, I want out of this. I, I am tired of dealing with these deceitful, treacherous uh, people and, and the unjust, the ungodly, the unrighteous people that are out there. And and we see it, right? I, I mean, so here we see the introduction to that psalm, and, and we can all uh, put ourselves in that very spot at times. And And then he goes on, he says, for thou art the God of my strength. You're the place that I go for safety, O God. I mean, you you are, uh, you are the means of safety. You you are everything, and and so Lord, I run to you. Okay, that's good, right? But then he asks the question: Why dost thou cast me off? Why why is it that that I feel like you you reject me? Why why is it that it's almost like I feel like you are holding me off at a, at a distance and, uh, be careful with your feelings. Okay. Uh, feelings will, will definitely deceive you at times. And, 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 but here, this is what he's thinking in his mind. Right. And then he says, why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? That word mourning has the idea of, of being in a dark place. I, I don't I don't know. I, I just find this powerful to think that, that David would be so transparent and uh praise the Lord for his obedience to write these very thoughts that God is uh prompting him to write and, and inspiring him to write these things because God God wants us to understand that sometimes we get in these very same places, right? And and so let let us not stay there and but we do get there okay and and that's what he's saying and and but then he goes on and he doesn't leave us in that dark place okay he says oh send out thy light and thy truth you, you know where the light is you know where the truth is right here that thing called the holy bible right and so here, here we have the, the, the light and the truth, and God gives it to us. And, and so let me tell you that if you're, you're feeling like him, like, like David was, Lord, why is it you've cast me off, rejected me, or you're holding me back at a distance for some, that's what I'm thinking and feeling in my mind. And, and I'm in a dark place, Lord, and, and I'm, I really need you. Then, uh, we ask, Lord, send out thy light and thy truth. Well, it's the word of God. So guess what? You have a Bible, then get in the Bible. If you don't have one, hey, let me know. I'll get you a Bible, okay? I, I don't, I, I'm never against giving somebody a Bible, right? And, and so, and let them lead me. And so let's stay in the word of God and and we allow the word of God to lead us, Right? And guess where they bring us? Guess where the word of God will bring us? Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Brings us right to the very presence of our God. I mean, brings us right to his feet. And you see the picture, how 
how beautiful this psalm is uh, and, and, and the power that, that he gives to us and uh, the abilities that the privileges that we have. And, and, and so he, he brings us right to the tabernacles and then will I go uh, to the altar of God. It's then that you worship. I, I mean, I, I see that today as I, so, so what do I do? You know, I, I spent time in prayer this morning and then I open up the word of God and, and guess what God did this morning right here in Psalm 43. I, I mean, he, he brought me to, into his very presence and, and it's there that, that he ministered to my heart and it's there that I, I had a wonderful morning of worship with the Lord and, and just letting him talk to me through his word and, and praising him and, and, uh, just right here at the altar of God, right? And, and unto God, my exceeding joy. You know, I, I know it's a Monday and I know that sometimes Mondays are a challenge and, and you got a busy week in front of you and, and, and there's issues that are going on. I mean, we have a family today that is dealing with the loss of their loved one. I, I'm visiting, uh, Holly tomorrow, who's, whose mom, they're sounding like, is going to pass into eternity sometime this week. And, I mean, they're dealing with some heavy things. I, I uh, You know, there, there's a lot of things going on, but uh, in, in all of, we can let all of that junk get to us, or we can, or we can go to the truth, to the light and to the truth, and, and the light and the truth then brings us into the very presence of God, and and gives us that heart of worship, and and then in in that time of worship, gives us an exceeding joy that that only God can give. And yea, upon the harp will I praise Thee, O God, my God. And then it's there that David is recalls and understands that, hey, my my feelings have have, uh, have been running all over the place, but Lord, I realize and understand from your light, your truth, and through this heart of worship that you are my God. Oh, how, how good it is, right? And so then he asks the question, with all of this in his heart and all of this in his mind now and understanding, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why, why am I like this? And why art thou disquieted within me? Well, why? Then there's no reason for that. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance in my God. <laughs> I love that. I, I don't know. That one was just a good one today. And and so we, we praise him and he's the health uh, of, of my countenance, of of what you see, okay? The my my outlook on life, my face, right? My 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 strength, my health. I mean, everything, everything is because of what he has done and how he ministers to us. And so, you know what? You take Psalm 43 and and allow God to uh, do this for you, and and it does bring an exceeding joy. And there's no reason to be cast down, and there's no reason to be disquieted, but but truly to be at peace. And and realize and understand the hope that we have in God and praise him because he is the health. I, I mean, there, nothing better. You, you're right, Jan. Nothing more soothing than, than that relationship. And not just the relationship, but then as believers, the fellowship, the fellowship that we have. And how good that is, you know, and... Uh, it, it, it is good, right? And Rose, thank you for praying for Matana. Uh, you, you know what? She's, she's really struggling right now. And, um, a lot of crazy things going on with her health right now. And, and so I would ask you guys pray for my niece, Matana, and continue to do so. Our church is doing that already. And, uh, I know that she would appreciate that. And, and, uh, uh, I'm going to share this psalm with her today, too, and send this to her. And um, I don't know. It's just powerful. This was a good morning in devotions, and it's a good day, right? It's a good day that I get to preach on heaven today and share that today. And uh, what a joy it is to know that if you know Christ as your Savior, that 
we are on our way to heaven. And so let's live that way today. Let's tell somebody about Jesus and let's encourage the believers and and talk to those who are unsaved and be kind to people and let's just see God use us greatly today. So uh, Lord willing, be back on here tomorrow. I'll be on here Wednesday, uh, but Thursday, Friday, uh, our guys are are going uh, ice fishing. So I will not be on here Thursday or Friday of this week, but uh, Lord willing, be back on here after that too. So uh, next week, but definitely uh, Lord willing, be on here tomorrow and, and Wednesday. Uh, God bless you guys and let's go out and uh, you know what? Let's just have a great day today.